Hi, I'm Asket here with Crandis. Hi. And uh, we've got a little weird segment today. Uh, we're going to be talking about an upcoming patch coming out on Monday and uh, some thoughts of our own about th what this change could potentially impact in the future and what we would like to see happen. So I'm being all vague and mysterious here, but basically on Monday, the uh, tale, the first tale of the arc, Impressing Locals, is becoming a full-fledged novice quest. Nothing about the, the playthrough itself is changing. Um, the rewards are the same, except you suddenly get treasure hunter keys off it. But it's being considered a quest and will be required for the normal quest game now. Um, so it was kind of a surprising change because before these tales came out, a lot of members of the community were asking, you know, why aren't you just releasing these as quests? You know, these <laughs> these are around the length or maybe a little bit longer than a bit longer, ones. yeah. Yeah. And um seeing this suddenly bumped up to a full quest, I had both me and Kronda sitting there going, Well, why aren't you bumping up most of the rest of them? And uh there's a fairly simple answer to that. Jagex is still worried about content level requirements or rather quest game level requirements specifically. Specifically um, because, at level 90. Yeah, because they have no issue leaving these as tails with these, you know, nothing about these tails would change if they were to become quests, but suddenly the quest cape is requiring these 90s. And uh, so that's really what we wanted to, uh, to talk about here. So um, in essence, with impressing the locals becoming a quest, we were thinking, Honestly, why don't you take the rest of the Tales of the Ark, bar two of them, which we'll discuss in a second, and, you know, bump them up to fully-fledged quests. Mm -hmm. um, Head of the Family, the second Tale of the Ark, could full well be its own, you know, fully-fledged quest. It's got a lot to do. There's a boss fight. There is required items. There's three different skills required. It's a solid 30-minute quest. Yep, as it well as Jet Hunter, are... which actually has decent length to it. So. Yeah, there's there's a lot that happens in this, and it sets up stories for the future. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any reason why this couldn't be a quest. It requires 90 wood cutting, 90 fishing, and 91 cooking. And like, I don't want those levels to be bumped lower. They're specifically part of what happens in the arc. But these highest levels, the light within already has an 80 wood cutting requirement. That's 10 yep. levels off. And and while wood cutting is a little slow, it's essentially AFK. It's free, and you, you make money off of it. And I just want to hit on this point before, yeah. because I know someone's probably going to say something about it. But to say that level 90 is an exclusive level, let's just paint the picture here. To have a quest cape, you need to have the equivalent of, what, 3 to 4 99s in XP? I can actually check that exact number for you. Yeah, to say, but it, it's definitely in the multiple 99s. So to say that... A 90 is too exclusive is completely absurd when there is more XP required than at level 90. So that that argument is completely invalid, and I'm I'm sorry to anyone that that offends, but that's that's the reality of it. Without any boosts, the uh, minimum total XP required to earn the quest point cape is current 42 million five hundred eighty seven thousand three hundred ninety two. Forty-two million five hundred what? Five hundred eighty-seven thousand three hundred and ninety-two. That's three ninety-nines. If oh, more, three million more. Than That's five point five ninety-nines. Is it? You yeah, said, yeah, it is. Yeah. Thirteen twenty-six thirty-nine. That would be like three something. I probably put it in the calculator wrong, but that's besides the point. Forty-two five eighty-seven. 392 divided by, I'm just going to... Divided by 1340 Yeah, it's, it's 3.299. like... Yeah. That's significant on its own. Bumping some stats up to level 90 is is not, you know, increasing that amount by very much. Maybe up to 4. I think another important thing to hit on is that 90 is not equal way to level 99. You still don't even have to train halfway through a skill. Yeah, that's, that's what, 4 million XP? Maybe? Yeah, something like that. Um, I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but it's... It's somewhere around it, there. It's completely reasonable. You're, we're not asking, you know, this would not be asking somebody to earn a level 99 in the skill. 
Right. This would be asking somebody to learn earn less than half. And let's be and, honest, this isn't 2002. This is 2016 yeah, it's, RuneScape. It's 2016 where we have virtual levels going up to 120. Exactly. Some, you know, the, as, as next year, the Slayer skill is being bumped up, uh, bumped up to 120. The XP available, the methods are absurd. Very high. It's yeah. it's you're not it's not like it's hard these days. You know, that's exactly. you can't use that as an excuse. Yeah, and especially, um, and it's not even like these levels tacked on there arbitrarily to every single one of these tales. Every single one of them has a very explicit reason why it's used. For head of the family, since we're still on that that topic. The 90 woodcutting is how you get your bamboo. The 90 fishing and cooking is how you get your fish oil. You can't get those other ways without catching implings, but you're supposed to do it with these levels here. And they can't be boosted. This right. is this is your method to do these quests. And so uh, uh, these are skilling methods that are a part of the ARC's ecosystem as it is. So by being able to do these, these newly minted quests, you would be able to then access the ARC's content and do a majority of the ARC's content as well, which, you know, as part of impressing the locals, you know, you that requires zero requirements and just you doing the quest. So I, I think it's almost strange that we don't have quests that pull the player into the ARC and be like, yo, here's, you know, we want you to have these levels things here in the ARC. Right. Makes a lot of sense to me. The ARC is our highest level hub in the game. We should be encouraging use of it to, to questers because this is story content right here. Exactly. And think at, of like the hype around that we would have had. Think of the hype we would have had if they would have released the arc and they said, hey, we have three quests and two mini quests for you. As yeah. opposed to five mini quests. Yeah. I mean, we're all getting hyped because Menaphos is coming with two quests. Yeah, exactly. It's... Look the gravity this. of a quest is far more than that of a mini quest. And that's just exactly. the, the um, reality. Especially of it. like especially head of the family here. It tells a complete story but sets up options for the future. Yeah, exactly. It sets and up a good I think sequel. That's very important. I mean Yeah. And nothing says these quests have to be absurdly long just because of exactly. their quote unquote difficulty. And the wiki's uh, the wiki's suggested length for head of the family is about thirty minutes, which is fairly good for a quest. Yeah. Like while this would be considered a grandmaster, yes, it's for head of the family as a boss fight. It, it's got a clear plot that brings you from point A to point B. And, and that's to be noted. The goal. wiki bases its time off uh, space barring. So. Yeah. And to make things even more important is head of the family actually sets up direct story pieces for Jed Hunter. Yes. Like, that's that's very important. Um, and then we also wanted, you know, Jed Hunter as its own quest as well, which is 90 Hunter and 91 Crafting. Crafting is already at 80 from the Light Within, and if you've done the Light Within, you have access to Prithinus, which means that you have access to a free crafting method. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, players would be able to make use of that at Harps. And then 90 Hunter. Um, Hunter's highest is 76 from the Lord of Vampirium. It's a little bit of a higher jump, but Hunter is the fastest skill in the game experience-wise. Yeah, it's absurd um, how much you can get. Once you hit 95 and you have access to in the arc, it goes above 1.2 million experience. You don't even you don't even need that. If you can do yeah. Big Chinchampa and get into the Grinwall private thing, it's already over 600k base. That's not included. And then again, if you're, if you're a quest caper, that means you've done the Light Within, and it means that you have access to the spell Crystallize. Yes, Grinwalls are at 77 exactly. Hunter, one level higher than the, uh, the Lord of Imperium, and that's already 1 million. Yeah, I mean, if you make that use of Crystallize with that, you're... It, yeah. It's it's crazy how much you can get in an hour. It, it really is. So, I mean, these are, especially on Jet Hunter, both of these feel very, you know, reasonable. These are levels that aren't particularly difficult to get. One has a free option. One has a disgustingly fast option. Mm -hmm. They're both, again, an important part of the quest, with the, uh, the crafting and the hunter being part of making the total shell bowls that allow you to you know, fake your death <laughs> right? and go through all of this important things. You need a disguise, you know, everything with the arc. Um, even more entertaining is later on um, uh, fishing. We, you know, with, uh, sorry, head of the family has a 90 fishing requirement. Jet Hunter requires deadliest catch. 
which is the 70 fishing requirement. So, I mean, right. they all kind of tie into each other, and it feels like a progression from that. And if we're going on the basis that the person has 75 from uh, the Light Within, or not, or not the Light Within, uh, Plague's End, you have access to Prithinus fishing, which is, again, yep. a very fast method. So, And completely AFK, literally. Yeah, click and exactly. Walk away. It's, it's incredibly easy. So these are just, there's so many options for experience gain for experienced questers. And I feel like the arc was a very perfect opportunity to push things further. Exactly. Um, one thing we were kind of discussing is that it doesn't really have a serious tie into any of, uh, of the other tales um, currently, and that would remain as a mini quest. And spiritual enlightenment, even with its 70 slayer requirement and all, would remain as a tale because it's not really a quest, it's get these loot drops from a mob and go talk to a guy. Yeah, both Flag Fail and Spiritual Enlightenment do have that. Yeah. Uh, it, they it, have it's that more, it's a fe it's, They're both fetch, blah, 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 fetch yeah. missions. And that, that qualifies them to remain as tales. Well, yes. impressing the locals sets up your storyline. Head of the Family continues it and set more in the future with a full storyline. And Jet Hunter is literally a quest. Like... Yeah, it's, it's like an hour long. Yeah, it's, it's basically a already quest. a quest in everything but name. Yeah. So, I I'm still a little shocked. This one especially wasn't considered. Um, and then with batch two, there's five mini or five tales from that, and we think that that would very easily be shifted into three quests. Yes. Eye for an eye is the longest of the tales, in my personal opinion, with some heavy combat. Uh, you have to kill, what, 27 Zyclopes? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, close to 30, yeah. Yeah, um, and all it requires is 90 mining and access to uh, access to Cyclosis from ports, which is a single 90 skill, which if you'd done the previous requirements for it, you know, Head of the Family, Impressing the Locals, Jet Hunter, Enlightenment, you would have, what, four or five ports skills right there available. Yeah, and so this is also they fixed the cyclosis bug, so it's not like you're not able to get it. It's incredibly common now, actually. So this is another, I mean, this is another, this is a quest length. It allows you to explore part of cyclosis. It follows up on Jed Hunter while setting the story up for the future. It, it has a wave-based boss fight, and then a uh, boss fight at the end. It's Right. It's fairly quest based. Um, that 90 uh, mining requirement, uh, Birthright of the Dwarves already sits us at 80 and gives you access to Lava Flow Mine. Like, it's, it's not like your options are limited there again. And if you have access to Perthanos, you can slowly make your way towards Saren Stones, which are much higher level, but you know, they're available as well. And then, uh, this, this is where things got a little tricky. Um, the next four mini quests, Harbinger, Twilight Zone, Ghost from the Past, and Damage Control, are all incredibly short, but they're essentially the branching portion of Jet Hunter. Um, yes. So yes. we felt like this would be a good opportunity to take those four and mesh them into a single quest. I don't really have a name suggestion or anything. I'm not really thinking that far in advance. Harb Twy Ghost Control. Har Harb Twy Past Control. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. But a yeah, they basically all tell one kind of but, large concise yeah. story like eye for an eye ends and then you start harbinger and it's like sail to a uh, twilight ambush whoa and then twilight zone goes from the past damage control they branch that's right. three branching paths just like jed hunter has those three branching options and they would fit very well as a singular quest they also require 86 farm and 90 divination the light within already has a sitting at 80 divination so i mean it's also not that far off uh, farming's a little trickier. Um, this is where I would expect to see the most pushback. But it's 86. It's still at 65 from Wild Gothic Sleeps, because apparently <laughs> no developer thought it was a good idea to raise farming's requirements since 2008. But now's the time. Come Wait, on. Wait, was there not a 75 requirement for Plague's End on farming? Nope. I would have assumed since that's a... Uh skill but okay yeah no there uh it has agility construction crafting herb lore mining prayer range summoning woodcut but even then mm -hmm. to balance this out it's not even a 90 rec it's an 86, yeah, it's 86. so 
And then um, Final Destination would also be its own standalone quest, which has no skill requirements, so there's nothing to complain about there beyond the fact that you have to have everything else complete. Yep. So these requirements are within 10 jumps for the most part, sometimes 20, but in skills that generally speed by a little bit. Um, Hunter's super fast. Cooking is very quick. Very, very, very fast. Deep. Another Fishing's one of the fastest forward, but it's in the very game. Relaxed and easy. Farming is the only one that's really any issue whatsoever. And even then, it's a skill that you do other skills during. Yes. So I, I do think it's reasonable. While farming is really the only one here that I think needs a smoother quest curve, it, it's not something I'm going to fret about. And it just means developers have more space to add farming requirements in the future without worrying about jumping too far at that point because we've already jumped that shark. Uh, another point we wanted to make was about the Firemaker's Curse. Uh, when this quest was announced, it was actually announced with a level 92 firemaking requirement before eventually being bumped down to 76 and a master level instead of 92 and a grandmaster. And knowing both me and Fang, we both got that 92 level before it got bumped down. Not only did I get it before it got bumped down, I complained about it being bumped down because I had spent all that time in the Jadinko lair getting it up just for that quest. Yep. I, I even used it as an example because I was actually a quest peer at that time where my levels essentially were not higher than the quest required. And I pointed out how literally a quest peer could easily go and instead of whining and bitching on the forums, could very easily get that level requirement long before the quest came out. Yep. So this is the sort of thing where with the proper warning that this is happening, easy, easy peasy, not a problem. Yeah, that was a complete tragedy because they basically mm -hmm. listened to one side of an argument and bumped it down well, because of that. Matters worse, the Firemaker's Curse was intended to be the start of a series, not with the same characters, but a series of quests that would be released with a razor-sharp focus on one specific skill mm -hmm. with a very high requirement in that skill. So, yeah. you know, the Firemaker's Curse, the, like, I feel like um, Deadliest Catch was intended to be another one of those with, you know, a high 90s fishing requirement that bumps right. down because Firemaker's Curse got all that backlash. And we don't know this for sure, but we believe, because Jagex has never said anything about it, but we believe that this series was canceled because of the backlash on yeah. the 90, 92. Because they, they seemed fairly interested and enthusiastic about doing it until, you know, a, a vocal minority was like, oh, this is so unfair. You can't expect us to train all the way up to 92. Yeah. That's halfway to 99, guys. Which, I mean, for a skill like fire making is especially kind of obnoxious to me. Right. I, I still remember being, you know, more by the reaction and the reception it was getting. And what made this even worse is that the next update by the same developer, which was Mod Anna, was Bonfires. Yeah, just, that was actually even funnier. Just to screw right in the face this whole wreck issue. Yeah. Like, it just, it was, that was great irony, but... Ah, oh, jeez. It was a mess. And I, I feel like the fact that we're at 2016 and we're still having issues pushing above 80 is really something that needs to be addressed and needs to be worked on. And these really wonderful tales are a good way of doing that. Yes. And if, you, if you're one of the people who believes that it shouldn't be raised to 90 because skills are boring or skills shouldn't have, you know, transfer into quest, you need to think about this for a second. This is a single game. Combat, skilling, and questing are all part of the one same game. They are not three separate games. There is going to be branch across. And you yeah. need to accept that point. And, and to me, the mark of a good quester is a good adventurer. We're called adventurer by 90% of the NPCs that don't just call us World Guardian all the time these days. Exactly. We have always been the adventurer. A good adventurer is a good balance of everything. It's the reason the Master Quest Cape has a variety of high skill requirements, high combat requirements. Mm -hmm. It's because it wants you to prove that you are a good adventurer. And I think it's crazy that the Quest Cape is so 
you know, and a, a portion of the questing community is so afraid of being asked to put in some effort in order to receive some story. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the other thing, too, is I, I almost feel like it's this fear of losing the cape. But, I mean, completionist players go through that all the time. Yeah. So why, why should questing be exempt from these, you know, more challenging requirements when it's already out in the game? These quests are out in the game. Um, I know a big thing that Jagex talks about with skill requirements is they, want, they worry about player interaction. Which is very, very important, and I can un- talk about it from that way. You know, if you've got a quest with seven level nineties on it, that cuts out a very large portion of the player base from ac- uh, accessing it, because it's not that nineties are hard to get, but it's you know that's that end tier stuff. Uh, you know, the higher you get into the nineties, the harder for it to be available to players. Mm-hmm. But these tales are in game already, right? This was them announcing plans. And yeah, I can understand. Another thing that just to point on to um, player interaction is for whatever reason, and I don't know if this is a specific business thing because you know I could be wrong on this, but it seems as if they're only measuring it by the player intera- interaction on release. Because um, they're it, not less... seeming to look at it over a period of time. Eventually everyone's going to get to that point. So that's actually where I disagree. Um, we uh, They showed us actually a metric of what quests are completed the most by new members. And interestingly, the desert starters popped up. Oh, I did see that, actually, yes. I find it very interesting that around the time that they're releasing data about the desert series being shockingly popular for new members, Manaphos is their next big planned update. So I, I do think they pay attention to quest completion tricks and how many people interact with specific pieces of content and what draws them in. But do you understand what I'm saying, though, when I say yeah, yeah. You know, they, like, they um, worry about the player interaction, but it's all because on release, there's only going to be yeah. X amount percent of the players that can do it. Oh, but, yeah, for sure. But um, over time, more people are going to do it. I think another reason they worry about on release for interaction, too, is because that's when most of their advertising costs are being poured into this. So, you know, a lot of the time they're saying, you know, if we're going to pour advertisement into, we want to make sure that it'll target a number of players who are interested in paying for membership to do this. But it, it's not like high level quests don't draw people in. Children exactly. of Ma brought a friend of mine back who has not played the game since. Heroes Welcome came out. In the two weeks before Children of Ma came out, he'd gotten all of the requirements, including requirements for quests he had not done, reclaimed his quest cape, and then played Children of Ma and loved it. And just to put on that point, Children of Ma was the number one completed quest of that release week. Which, yeah, yeah. you might think, okay, obviously it's a quest that comes out. This is the monster quest right now. It is it the has, highest level quest. It in the has game. the most racks of any quest in the game. So to say that high racks are going to discourage people when it becomes the most completed quest just shows how much incorrectness is in that. Point. Yeah, exactly. These high requirements exist not as a gate at that point, but as an encouragement. I was a player who always was super excited, not just about quests. What about achievement diaries? Because it gave me new goals to work towards. Exactly. These challenging requirements weren't there to bar me from them. They were there to encourage me to reach those points. And I remember as, you know, young tiny Krondis, I (laughs) skilled for the sake of getting up to quests. That was a goal. You know, that was the that was was the biggest accomplishment was getting a skill rack and it's seeing on there you now have the skill rack and this X skill for whatever quest. I loved seeing those. Yeah, I I loved seeing that. Like they should encourage people with quests to get their skills because like I said, this is a single game. This is not Mm -hmm. three separate games. It further goes into these levels too, because you know it's a single game, and this is encouragement to get your skills up. 
But then also, when you have skills at that level, you're able to access these skilling uh, methods in the arc and further train and improve your skills. Exactly. It's not like, as we mentioned earlier, it's not like these are just randomly selected requirements that are completely one-off. These are requirements for specific skilling uh, interactions that are used in the quest. Or, or just so used in the arc in general. Yeah. You know, and it's, I think that's it's not like... The, very key. Yeah, it's not like these wrecks just exist or don't exist outside the quest. Or what would be the quest, rather. They yeah. are there because they are the wrecks for interacting with skills in the arc. There, there's not really anything else to say on that. Like, seriously. Yeah. yeah. These, these skills are chosen for a reason. They encourage players to get up there, and then once you're there, it encourages you to train further by, you know, pushing you right out into the world of the arc. You know, you get chimes from these quests. You get taijidu from these quests. You have the levels now to continue to train in the arc and to continue to improve your standing in the arc. Right. And I, I don't see why that would be considered a waste. The quest cape is ready to be pushed up higher. It, it's it really is. We have skills being bumped up to 120. We have our first elite skill requiring three level 80s. We've got super high level quests that build on, you know, half the over half the quests in the game. We've got a a region that literally relies, you know, high 80s up to 95. Right. We it's... we should be encouraging players through story focused story content to improve themselves to that point, not to cower away from wanting to train your skills and wanting to be involved in these types of activities. Mm -hmm. It ties a little bit to me uh, into that thread that Mod Raven's been uh, posting about. For those not in the know, uh, Mod Raven Is this made about the a thread about story group raids, questing raids essentially. Yeah. Um, and there were a lot of comments from people talking about how you know, they don't like group content, and that I can understand, but then somebody else is like, well, I don't like being challenged boss-wise, and I saw, started to see a lot of that. And it was another kind of eye-opening moment where it's like, guys, you're playing RuneScape. You're not playing yeah. RuneScape's quests. You're playing an MMO called RuneScape that has a plethora of content out there for you. Why are you scared of improving your character? Well, and I think another thing people need to realize is it's not just an MMO. That is not where that acronym ends. It is an yeah, MMO RPG. RPG. Yeah. This is an World RPG game. Me. Look at your classic RPGs. Your Earthbounds. Your, you know, all the classic RPGs from Dungeons back in the day. Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons. All about hell, leveling hell, up and improving. Freaking Pokemon is considered yeah. an RPG. Chrono Delicious. Trigger. Chrono Trigger, all of these, all of these games that push you further and further. Because guess what? If you don't get those levels up, if you don't do the grinding, you're not gonna make it. Yeah, it's, it was, it's as simple as you that. You can't, you like... can't sit back and say, "I don't like being challenged," or "I don't like having to grind." Well, guess what? Get over it. That's the kind of game that this is. RuneScape is a very AFK game at times, too, so it's not even like it's a huge time investment or a huge effort investment. Yeah, um, it's... Somebody somebody was like, you know, um, I, I had made a comment and somebody replies to me like, you know, this is the mindset of a uh, somebody running around with T90s, you know, and their yaks and their overloads. What people don't seem to understand is that stuff is affordable. Yeah. Maybe not T90s. But to get yourself a set of main and offhand melee weapons statted at tier 85, it costs under 2 million coins for the blade of Namora and Avarice from God Wars Dungeon 2. Right. It'll cost you about 6 million to outfit yourself in a set of bandos, which has enough damage boost and armor to get you through pretty much any high level encounter. Mm hmm. Manshani recently or did a. If you really want to go the hard route of, I have no money, guess what? You get a set of T-85s for free from ports. Yeah. That is armor and not, weapons. Not just, yeah, not just a set of armor, but also weapons. And then, if you do the arc, you get boots and gloves too. Exactly. Like, um, as I was saying, Mod Shawnee recently did a Raxor with uh, Chaotix and Armadil. Mm-hmm. Like, 
it, it's all about the effort that you put in and what you think you should be getting out of it. And I think it's very important that questers should remember that the game should be a challenge for questers too. You know, if you want to interact with some of this very high tier content, you should, you know, be putting that skill and effort in. Maybe, you know, I, I, I don't think we need quest bosses on the level of Telos here, but... Right. You know, I think that bosses should be challenging people more from quests. I think that skill requirements should be challenging people more on a more limited scale, just like with what these tales do is... Exactly. You know, one, one to three nineties at most. You know, I don't, I don't need a quest with seven, you know, ten nineties. Yeah. But things like what the Firemaker's Curse had set out to do originally is exactly the way that I think level nineties should start to be introduced. Mm -hmm. And Tales from the Ark does that gloriously. And I think with Impressing the Locals becoming an actual quest, now is the time to start looking into moving the others into questing. Yeah. So they're, they're they worthwhile stories. They're worthwhile environments. They've got the length. They've got the interesting hooks. They've got, you know, everything you want from a quest. Yeah. Jagex why, really why needs bar to... them from that title. Why bar them from that quest gate just because the requirements can be challenging. Yeah. Jagex really needs to stop pandering to the people who are just lazy. And I don't say that in a mean way. I mean, I kind of do, but it, it's true. <laughs> you know, you are essentially being lazy by saying, I don't like being challenged. I don't like having the skill because it's boring, quote unquote. You know, yeah. it's... And to me, to me, what that says is that it's not that they're lazy, but it's that the effort is a challenge and they just want to keep their quest cape. No, I, I would most but certainly call it lazy. We, if, if, if the effort of sitting there and having a skill AFK itself for you is too much effort, you are lazy. That, that's, especially that's especially for point. skills that aren't really easy. But in the end, a, the reason a lot of us got into questing was because of that challenge of getting yourself to these levels and earning your way up. Yeah. And RuneScape has almost seemed to forget that level requirements should be going up. Very, very rarely do we see requirements going up any significant numbers. Skills are completely ignored and abandoned. Like, like on here, farm is still at 65 eight years later. Mm -hmm. after, its la after that 65 requirement, and farming's been out longer. Meanwhile, Divination's already managed to make it to level 80. Right. Jagex needs to remember that putting skill requirements on things is not something. It, they just have to be strategic about it. And right. I think Tales of the Ark are the best way to do that. They've been out in game. If people were interested in that story beforehand, they've already gotten the level, already interacted with this content. It's been in game. You know, half of them have been in game since June. The others have been in game since October. Now, is the time to say, hey, we're going to turn these into quests come January, come February. Get ready. Yep. You know, give that warning. Players know what's in this content. They know what they need to do. It would make a lot of sense. It really would. That's my pitch. Yep, I think that about sums it up. I, I kind of appreciate that this discussion kind of accidentally meandered into just this discussion of you know, what an adventurer is and how, how we, yeah, which means because it, 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 it's ended all up being a little more, it ended up being a little more interesting than just saying, yo, y'all should turn these into quests with these high requirements. Yeah. But it, it's a good point to talk about and it's a good point to make. And I think it left a lot of discussion in the future as well. And, and let's just leave it at a note here that we're not saying that quests should have high recs for the sake of having high recs. You know, I don't want Absolutely. I don't want tent them to put, oh, let's say this quest has ninety two wood cutting and you never even see a tree in the quest. Yeah. You know, obviously there needs to be reason for it, but don't be so afraid to put it there. You know, be you know, willing if, if you to push people. Reason for it, just do it. Yeah, exactly. One thing that was almost ironic to me is um 
Birthright of the Dwarves essentially did exactly that. Where it, it stuck a level 80 mining, a level 82 smithing, and a level 85 strength. Yes, mid-80s. And it didn't have reasons to use these. Yeah, exactly. So I, I So even though I the was, precedent is little, there though. Like, I had those levels at the time when it, and it annoyed me a little bit. I always thought that skill requirements should be justified in a quest. Mm -hmm. and yeah, even though the precedent is there to have random meaningless requirements, we're still not yeah. endorsing that. We're saying, yes, skills need to be useful in quests, but they don't need to be barred in the 80s forever. Exactly. I Now, I would be you know a little more troubled to say that we should start going above 92, 93, I think that's where a line starts to be drawn where you know these level requirements are getting to that point where it's more asking a play I rather think, than anything else. I think once this and it's gonna take a while, but I think once we hit oh, the yeah. point that we get say ninety five, then we can reconsider. Yeah. But we need to work to that point first. But, but because, we need to hit nineties first. Yeah, I mean uh, uh, yeah, we have to work through the the low nineties first. Yeah. So, and it's not even like I want to see every single or uh, every single requirement suddenly bumped up to 90. But I just, I, the whole point of this little mini cast here, I guess it's turning into a proper cast. Um, <laughs> it was just to say, I, I don't want developers to feel afraid to put those higher level requirements onto things because they don't have a reason to be afraid of that sort of thing. You know, yeah. if, if your requirement fits, do it. I really appreciated with Children of Ma, Mod Ali note, noting that Karshai could be an important player, and so he just put Karshai's trouble as a requirement to the quest. Exactly. Thus requiring Ritual of the Majorette. Yeah. And that's, that's really what I want to see, is a developer that knows what key things they want to see in their quest, and are, are not afraid of backing, you know, will not be backing down from a requirement that may be challenging for some. Yeah. Because in the end, it encourages players to better themselves as players. Mm -hmm. and I think that's all I got. You got yep. anything else? No, I think that's a good end for the discussion. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. Um, I'm going to be posting this up uh, tomorrow morning. Well, this morning we're recording this for me at 12.30 in the morning. And um, You will hear it when you hear it, basically. Yeah, I'm going to toss it up with probably a nice little write-up that uh, is a little more succinct on this topic, but uh, you know, I just I, re I really want to hear people's thoughts on it. What other people feel about for requirements. Um, it, Yeah, that's all I got. Um, sorry for a uh, fair lack of content on the channel. Getting there. Just finished the semester. Yep, I I've, have time. I've got finals next week. I've got like seven scripts ready to go, and I'm. I have a script that's been ready finals. for like a <laughs> month now that I've not been able to yep. record for. Stuff's coming. Yeah, just. Be, I've got. I, I think patient. I have seventeen quest reviews recorded right now, but I just have not had time to edit. In oh my Jesus! <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, stuff stuff's coming once stress week is out. Of, stress month is out of the way. <laughs> yeah. So keep an eye out for that. Um, more stuff's coming. Uh, thank you so much for listening to this uh, little podcast rant thing about requirements. And uh, hopefully Jagex takes a look at this. Thanks, Jagex, for you know sticking and pressing the locals as a quest. I think it sets a nice precedent. Even though it doesn't have any level requirements, it just opened up our thought process about this. And hopefully we'll spark some discussion. And you know who can no longer ask for an art quest because it's already there. Yeah, that was the first thing I did was as soon as I heard this, I tweeted at a, a certain um, demon, might have might have been an Avernic type demon, and um, let him know that an art quest was coming. And I got him really excited and then dashed his hopes <laughs> by pointing out it was just uh, impressing the locals. So uh, whoever decided this was becoming a quest, thank you for facilitating my trolling abilities. I really appreciate that. All right. All right, before this strays off any farther. Yeah, I'm going to mask it. Um, there's Crandis. Possibly. Thanks for listening. Bye. <laughs>